Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Beautiful morning this morning here in the Ozarks. And we can remember with the sun shining down that the sun, the Lord Jesus Christ, is also shining down upon us, watching us every day. Everything we do, everything we say, everything we think. He's the all-seeing God. Hallelujah. This devotional today is called, He Shall Not Be Afraid of Evil Tidings, by Charles Spurgeon. And this is really a very important message, too, in this hour. For we are not to be afraid of sudden calamities, sudden reports, evil reports. We're not to be afraid. We are to be in peace. In Psalm 112.7, He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Let's just look at that scripture for a minute. He shall not be afraid, and afraid there means frightened. He shall not be frightened or dread. He shall not be afraid of evil, bad, adverse, calamitous, Tidings. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. And tidings there is something heard, an announcement, a report, news. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart, why should he be not afraid? Because his heart is fixed. And that means firm. To be fixed, firm. Trusting to be confident or sure in the Lord. That's powerful, isn't it? That's a powerful verse. And that's one that we need to look at and remember every day, especially the time we're coming into. Because there can be sudden reports, sudden announcements, evil tidings. But we're not to be afraid. Why? Because our heart should be fixed, trusting in the Lord. This devotional today, Christian, you ought not to dread the arrival of evil tidings. Because if you are distressed by them, what do you more than other men? In other words, how different... Are we than other people if we're all distressed and afraid and worried about evil tidings? Because that's the way the world does. Other men have not your God to fly to. They have never proved his faith, faithfulness as you have done. And it is no wonder if they are bowed down with alarm and cowed with fear. I'm going to read that again. Other men have not your God to fly to. They have never proved his faithfulness as you have done. And it is no wonder if they are bowed down with alarm and cowed with fear. But see, we have proven his faithfulness as his children, haven't we? Over and over and over again. So we have no reason for alarm or to be cowed down with fear because we know our God is faithful to take care of us in every situation. But you profess to be of another spirit. You have been begotten again unto a lively hope and your heart lives in heaven and not on earthly things. Now, if you are seen to be distracted as other men, 
What is the value of that grace which you profess to have received? Where is the dignity of that new nature which you claim to possess? Again, if you should be filled with, harm, with alarm as others are, you would doubtless be led into the sin so common to others under trying circumstances. That's a serious issue, isn't it? We profess to have a new nature. To have our God taking care of us. Right? Well, he says here, again, if you should be filled with alarm, as others are, you would doubtless be led into the sin so common to others under trying circumstances. So, in other words, we can fall to these kinds of things if we let ourselves, And we don't take the word as truth, what the word says, and stand on it and start getting into fear and doubt, then we can start doing what people of the world are doing under trying circumstances, can't we? The ungodly, when they are overtaken by evil tidings, rebel against God. They murmur, and they think that God deals hardly with them. Will you fall into that same sin? Let's look at the definition of fall. The definition of fall. Will you fall into that same sin? The definition of fall is to move downward, typically rapidly and freely without control, from a higher to a lower level. That's the definition of fall. Will you fall into that same sin that the ungodly do? When they're overtaken by evil tidings, they rebel against God. They murmur and think that God deals hardly with them. Will you provoke the Lord as they do? Let's look at the definition of provoke. Deliberately make someone annoyed or angry. Deliberately do it. Will you provoke the Lord as they do? Moreover, unconverted men often run to wrong means in order to escape from difficulties. And you will be sure to do the same if your mind yields to the present pressure. It's serious, isn't it? Trust in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Once again, let's look at these definitions. Trust in the Lord. The definition of trust. Firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Firm belief. Okay. Trust in the Lord. We have a firm belief in the Lord. In his reliability, in his truth, in his ability, in his strength. Trust in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. The definition of wait. The act of staying in one place or remaining inactive in expectation of something. Wait. The Lord says wait. That means wait. Stay in one place. Remain just still. In expectation. Wait patiently for him. The definition of patiently. The capacity to accept. <coughs> excuse me. The capacity to accept or tolerate delay trouble or suffering without getting angry or upset. Let's read that again. The definition of patiently. The capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering 
without getting angry or upset. Trust in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Your wisest course is to do as Moses did at the Red Sea. Stand still and see the salvation of God. For if you give way to fear when you hear of evil tidings, you will be unable to meet the treble with the calm composure which nerves for duty and sustains under adversity. I'm going to read that again. For if you give way to fear when you hear of evil tidings, you will be unable to meet the treble with that calm composure which nerves for duty and sustains under adversity. How can you glorify God if you play the coward? Saints have often sung God's high praises in the fires, but will your doubting and desponding as if you had none to help you magnify the Most High? That's like a slap question, isn't it? Think about the martyrs that were martyred for the sake of Christ. A lot of them were singing. You know, the saints in other countries, they really, really go through the fire. And they do sing high praises to God in the midst of the fire. But will your doubting and desponding as if you had none to help you magnify the Most High? Ask yourself that question. Are you doubting? Are you being despondent? As if there's none to help you? If God's not there to help you and no one else is there to help you? Does that magnify the Most High? When He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you and I'll provide for you when all His promises are true? Then take courage in relying in sure confidence upon the faithfulness of your covenant God. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, in other countries, they live with war every day. They see war, they see death, they see killing, they see all of these things every day. And this world, this nation, is getting worse every day. We know when things happen in the nation, in the world, and there's sudden catastrophic reports. We are not to be afraid. We are not to be afraid. Our heart is to be fixed, trusting, confident in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's keep that in mind today. Father, I thank you for this message. I thank you, Lord, that we can be fixed in you. We can be sure in you. We can be confident in you, Lord. That you know what's going on and you will take care of everything. No problem. Help us to trust, Lord, and to know that without a shadow of a doubt. Father, I pray you will not let the enemy steal the seed of this little message that people will remember it over and over and over again in their heart and mind. That the seed will be planted, it will grow up, and it will bear fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.